Thank you, Jessica. Well, happening today, the House will vote on holding Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress. Now, this comes after a battle over audio recordings related to President Biden's handling of classified documents. The Justice Department has defied subpoenas from House committees that turn over audio recordings as part of their impeachment inquiry. Congress's transcripts of the interviews, but Republicans say that the audio recordings are needed because the transcripts may have been altered. We have made clear that we will not provide audio recordings from which the transcripts that you already have were created. Releasing the audio would chill cooperation with the department in future investigations. And it could influence witnesses' answers if they thought the audio of their law enforcement interviews would be broadcast to Congress and the public. The Justice Department said disclosure of the recordings could have an effect on witness cooperation in future investigations. If the resolution passes, it would direct the House Speaker to refer the case to the U.S. Attorney, attorney rather, uh, for potential criminal prosecution. And former Trump advisor Steve Bannon is asking an appeals court to allow him to remain a free man while he appeals his conviction. Bannon was convicted two years ago of contempt of Congress after he refused to answer questions from the House January 6th committee. Bannon filed an emergency motion asking the U.S. Court of Appeals to overrule a lower court's order, stating he must report to prison on July the 1st. His attorney argues prison would prevent him from serving as a, quote, meaningful advisor in the campaign ahead of the November election. And a jury found President Joe Biden's son guilty of three felony charges related to buying a gun while addicted to drugs. Jesse Tenor has some lawmakers' response to the Hunter Biden conviction. After a week-long trial and just several hours of deliberations, a Delaware jury found the son of a sitting president guilty. No one in this country is above the law. Special counsel David Weiss brought the case against Hunter Biden, who is now convicted of lying about his drug use when he bought a gun in 2018. This case was about the illegal choices defendant made while in the throes of addiction. President Joe Biden said in a statement he accepts the outcome of the case and respects the judicial process. We believe in the rule of law. Maryland Democrat Congressman Jamie Raskin said the conviction undercuts Republican arguments that President Biden uses the Justice Department to target former President Donald Trump. I've not heard a single Democrat anywhere in the country cry fraud, cry fixed, cry rigged. But New York Republican Congresswoman Elise Stefanik remains critical of the Justice Department. This was Joe Biden's corrupt DOJ that tried to negotiate a sweetheart plea deal. Hunter Biden faces up to 25 years in prison. Georgia Republican Congressman Rich McCormick said he'll hold off on judging the conviction until he sees the sentence. That'll be more telling about the Department of Justice and what we think is going to actually happen. All right, and happening today. So what is next for Hunter Biden in terms of sentencing? Well, Biden is facing a maximum of 25 years in prison, but in the federal system, first-time offenders don't get anywhere near the max. The federal sentencing guidelines are expected to recommend a far lighter punishment, but judges aren't bound by the guidelines. So the judge could decide not to send him to prison at all. Other options, of course, include probation or home detention. Now, happening today, the Senate is set to vote on a Supreme Court ethics bill. The bill would give the court 180 days to adopt and publish a code of conduct and require justices to publicly explain any decisions to recuse from cases. The bill would also establish new rules for disclosing gifts and travel, but it is likely not to move forward because all it takes is one senator to vote no, and the Senator Lindsey Graham has already said he will block the bill. All right, and in your immigration news, Operation Lone Star has dedicated billions of dollars toward reinforcing the southern border with state troops. But how long could Texas sustain its own programs? Ryan Chandler has the latest. We can hope for the, the best, but we have to plan for the worst. Texas leaders hope to see a new administration in the White House next year. But one key question as lawmakers reviewed border operations on Tuesday. How long can Texas keep up Operation Lone Star? If we maintain current funding and administration in Washington does not change, Director, how long can we do this? 
We'll do it as long as we're instructed to do. But Director McCraw says sending personnel to the border takes away from public safety elsewhere in the state. He says he'll need more troopers. Everywhere you take a trooper from is going to be less safe than where you put that trooper at. It's going to be more safe. It's, it's a law enforcement physics 101. Meanwhile, Operation Lone Star is expanding. Governor Abbott late last month unveiling this forward operating base for National Guard troops in Eagle Pass. Some neighbors of that new base, though, say it's unwelcome. There's millions of dollars being invested, but I, I'd rather have it spend on infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I'd rather spend on health care, on education. Lawmakers acknowledging some tough choices ahead for funding and fortifying the border as the future of immigration and the election remain uncertain. The legislature will have some very difficult decisions. Well, as we mentioned yesterday, Senate Bill 4 remains on hold, a pending ruling from an appellate court. Eight suspected terrorists uh, with ties to ISIS were arrested in Los Angeles, New York, and Philadelphia. The group entered the U.S. this year by crossing the Mexican border. They were vetted and allowed to remain in the country. The group was tracked by the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force. The group entered the country last spring and passed through the screening process. Well, you guys know what time it is. It's that lunchtime outlook. And if you're already getting hungry, like Danielle and I sure are, you can expect those temperatures to be in the low to mid 90s this afternoon. We don't have a heat advisory and rain chances are only at 10%. So no, it's possible that you could catch a sprinkle, but we have better 